Welcome to the Whiskey Vault. I'm Rex. I'm Daniel. Uh, this is the, or you're a, some, there's whiskey. Yeah. There's. All right. So we're on to Deanston 12 by Popular Demand. I like Deanston 12. Me too. Good job, Popular Demanding people. Now, there are a lot of people in the Scotch world who hate Deanston 12 the way that Jimmy Legg hates Dalmore. What? Because it's a fairly recent distillery, I think they reopened in the 90s or started in the 90s or anyway, their origins are fairly young. Sure. And people felt that they released a lot of stuff before it was ready. Sure. Now, I disagree with those people. Okay. I love Deanston 12. I think it's great. Damn. I think Deanston 12 is all honeysuckle on the nose and green grass. Yeah. And this sort of vibrant, light flavors. Yeah. Similar to Japanese whiskeys. Mm hmm And then I think once you take a sip, about a third of the way in, you get a little spike of black pepper, which is their hint of smoke. And then it sort of finishes with uh, an aftertaste of hay. Damn! Oh, man. Oh. That's, wait, that's better than I remembered. Yeah. What, and it, wait, what and am it I... ends with hay and honeysuckle. Because... And I don't understand why someone wouldn't love that. Taste there is, are a lot of people who hate it. Taste is dramatically affected by what you had moments earlier. What was the last thing we had? We had that um, Korean oh, whiskey. No, no, no. I had Mongolian vodka. Oh, yeah. You just took a sip of vodka and you came to this and it has all kinds of character. and Bursting with flavors. And drama. And bursting with flavors. Yeah. So start with vodka, then drink Deanston. No, no, no. Mongolian vodka. <laughs> Mon specifically. Yes. Get your hands on some Mongolian vodka since it is so readily available. So, honey... Like the, uh, the 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 flo the floral sweetness in there. Yeah, 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 and floral like and that stays with you. When most people say floral, you think the fake flower notes. But when what we mean, or what I mean anyway, is have you ever been in a greenhouse uh, where there's blooming flowers? Then you get this sweet note in the air of all these these blooms. Yep. But behind it is green plant, earth, loam. Fertilizer, all the other stuff. Chlorophyll. And I get that from this. I get that sweet note of honeysuckle, but I also get all the growing plant and earth notes that are behind in a greenhouse. Damn, dude. I love this whiskey. And, and I have a hard time understanding why someone would really so, dislike it. So for me, this is one of the lighter and friendlier whiskeys that also does a really good, good job of um, having some complexity. There's several things going on in here, and it's not, it doesn't have to be like a hard, big, loud, aggressive whiskey where you're just getting a wall of flavor thrown at you and you're picking out various things. Let's try the 18. Yeah, this is. So I've got the Deanston 18. Let's see what, what six more years this is in the distillery did. Light and sweet to this whiskey. And uh, complex. You got the honey, you got the floral, a little bit of the, 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 the grass notes on the back end there. Okay, now it turned into Glen Farkless. Now let's pull off the Glen Farkless. I guarantee you that's Glen Farkless 12 all day long. Okay. The Traken, uh, or the Traken. Is it wrong that I want to upload a video of Dude, add, uh, add a dash more of black pepper, and we just made Glen Farkless. Deanston 18 and Glen Farkless are only separated by a hint of pepper. Right? Isn't that bizarre? Now, Keep in mind, a Deanston 18 is close to $100, and a Glen Fark was 12 is close to $35, $40. Okay, so the Deanston, for me, has a little bit more richness to it. And it's smoother. More richness. The Glen Fark was 12 is a little spikier. Uh, and, well, it's still exceptional. I love Glen Fark was. Dude, all of these are amazing, man. And if you like one of any of these, you're probably going to like the other. Yeah, there's more vanilla in the Deanston 18. Uh, the track and is it wrong that I want to upload a video of some bread toasting <laughs> and post it using that hashtag? Nope, not wrong. Just to mess with you guys. Do it, man. If that's how you want to toast the channel, take a video of some bread toasting, upload it to YouTube. We or, will we will use that shit. Give us a link, do hashtag toast so we can find it. That is such a dad joke. It is. <laughs> we will end an episode with a dad joke. But if somebody goes to that much trouble. Yeah, that's worth it. <laughs> that's totally worth it. <laughs> All right, uh, TF Wall. Hey, Daniel, any chance of offshoot posts during a whiskey advent calendar this year? No, no, yes, yes. 
Okay, so I put this down because by the time you see this, we'll be getting right on to December. Yeah. And I am absolutely doing the whiskey advent calendar. Have you started this? Uh, no. You've been talking about doing those. Dude, I've been so busy. I was going to start tonight, but not after shooting four episodes of this. So I will start tomorrow, and I'm going to I'm gonna bat shoot all of them in a row. And they'll be back at the table, like the way this channel originally started. Every day, we'll do the advent videos. They'll come out even on the weekends until uh, the end of the year. Man, you're saving me half that whiskey. Totally not. <laughs> I'm drinking it all. <laughs> no, you need to be around because what needs to happen is you need to pour it, take a sip, and then move on to the next video. So you need to be in my whiskey dump glass. <laughs> it's, a, it's super serious. Did you just call me a whiskey dumpster? <laughs> I totally did. <laughs> Rex Williams, the whiskey, whiskey dumpster. dumpster. <laughs> oh, totally worth it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> That's at my expense, but I do appreciate how brutal it sounds. Uh, what I re oh, Marcus, Marcus Retzer, what I really like about your reviews is that you're able to Bind all the hints you're getting from whiskey to a single memory of your own. Oh, yeah. Whenever people ask me why they taste different things in the same whiskey uh, as different I... Different history. As I am, I point out to the I point out the, the whiskey vault. What is really easy to understand watching your videos is that a guy from Texas can't have the complete same experience from a whiskey as a guy from Bavaria, Germany. Yes. Because we grew up with different smells and tastes completely different. Absolutely. Uh, so we may agree on things like sweetness and caramel and dark fruits and so on, but never in the memory we recall from tasting a whiskey. Yes. There are many people that review whiskey on YouTube. I think you deserve your spot among them because you deliver something I don't get from the other Thanks for your effort. We deserve a spot, Daniel. Yes, we have that spot. Okay, so here's what I'd say. Here's what I love about smell. So remember, the sensors in your nose, little science for you, about the size of a postage stamp in the top of your sinus cavity, thousands of sensors right there, and they go straight from your nose to the part of your brain responsible for memory and emotion. Not for logic, memory and emotion. And so that's why when you smell things, you'll recall memories and emotions. That's why you can have a smell that reminds you of a person or a season. You know, someone could say it smells like Christmas, which is insane because Christmas is just a day on a calendar, mm -hmm. right? But anyone who's heard it smells like Christmas knows what that means. And they all recall different smells depending on, for them, what Christmas smelled like. Right. Right. It, here's an irony. I grew up uh, every other year would go to my mom's parents for Christmas and you would have uh, 20 adults chain smoking in a ranch house and uh, So for me cigarette smoke reminds me vaguely of Christmas <laughs> and so uh, but you know, that's a thing so Absolutely your upbringing your history everything going into your brain is going to create different memories for smells and so one of my favorite things is to taste and smell whiskey with people who have totally different backgrounds because what they will find in a glass will be very disparate. And I love that. I love that. All right, let's do some comment roulette here. Comment roulette. Comment roulette. Okay, this is from Matt Boeing. Bowen. Hey guys, I am a more recent subscriber, but you have made me fall in love with whiskey. As I have been binging all your episodes, I was wondering, are there bottles in the vault uh, sorted at all? Or just strewn about? Be careful, you might ruin every future episode for my slightly OCD, OCD ah. self if you answer incorrectly. Yeah, let's just say they were organized when we started. They're directionally, ha there's some organization. Yes, but now I'm running out of room, and so they're not that specific. So what was the intention of the organization? The intention yeah. was that the far wall over there started with uh, independent bottlings into Isla Scotch. Into here, you end up with islands. Then uh, Campbelltown, then Highland, then Speyside, then Lowland. Over here you've got rye, blended scotch, world whiskey, which is just weird whiskeys from parts of the world that aren't known for whiskey. At the top, Canada, and then into Ireland for two shelves, and then into bourbon, and unfortunately now the floor has shit I don't have room for, which is over a hundred bottles. Okay. And then this back section, is backstock, overstock, and wheat whiskey. And then the far corner is American whiskey, American single malts, clear spirits, and budget whiskeys. All right. Well, but it's overrunning like crazy. And I need to build new shelving in the floor for it. And that's because of you guys. So thank you. You magnificent.
bastards. All of you magnificent bastards. All right, one more. Uh, uh, yeah, some Canadian whiskeys are not appealing. Good for mixing cocktails. One more. Hey guys, oh, it's <laughs> the exact same one I just read. Uh, uh, Tyler Bourbon. Tyler, oh, Tyler. Tyler yeah. Bourbon. Uh, talk we know the bourbon. The dill note is something I can't d deal with either. Yeah. Per can't recommendation, I picked up a bottle of Wood Re Woodford Reserve oh, Rye yeah. and it had that note. No it bueno. Did. I much prefer a bourbon rye such as Pikesville. So he's talking yep. about that rye we did, Sonoma rye. Yeah, 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 the Sonoma rye, and you're right, dude, the dill note is, it just ruins everything for me. Brutal. As soon as I pick up a whiskey and I think, oh, pickles, I'm out. <laughs> I just, just not a thing. And you know, a lot of people will do a pickleback I've heard shot. This. I've heard this. I am not that guy, and I like pickles. Was that whiskey made for those people? Yeah, if you like your pickleback, get your Sonoma rye. You like pickles in the back. All right, I think that does this. And Whiskey Advent Calendar will be happening. If you want to buy it and join along, you may be running out of time to get, but if, you'll get it before we get to Christmas Eve. Um, and I, the Whiskey Advent Calendar I'm using is the generic whiskey one. And it's just called 2017 Whiskey Advent Calendar. And it's uh, 170 pounds. Yeah, not telling, not telling you to buy it. That's just the one he's using. Yeah, I'm just trying to let you know uh, that's what I will be using to guide our advent calendar. Pickle in the back. Here's to fighting, stealing, and drinking. If you fight me, you fight for a friend. If you steal me, you steal a lover's heart. Pickle in the back. <laughs> and if you drink, may you drink with us. Pickle in the back. Here's to the girls of the American shore. I love but one, I love no more. But she's not here to drink her part, so I'll drink her drink with all my heart. Hey, thanks for hanging out with us in the Whiskey Vault. Don't forget to throw in a like, hit that subscribe button on the bottom right, and drop a question or comment down below.